I never thought I would have anything to do with OB except to be a mom when I was in nursing school. Life does have its surprises. My male students often think OB is totally unnecessary. But what if you end up working in ER? Do you think you will never see a delivery? Think again. Check out the reasons for promoting an upright position during labor. Unfortunately, you will probably not get to see a delivery in the squatting or leaning position in this rotation. But I think as more women take control of their labor and delivery, you will see it more. There are times when the lithotomy traditional position is good. If we're expecting some difficulties, they may best be handled with maximum visibility. And lithotomy gives us that. In years past, I delivered a number of babies from squatting women and always felt like I was standing on my head, reaching underneath them. But that was my job. And unless there was a good reason not to allow it, I felt that the women ought to have a choice. It should be noted that the routine use of a supine or lithotomy position for labor and birth has been clearly identified as a harmful or ineffective practice and should be discouraged. The open glottis method is greatly preferred because it results in less hypoxia. You will see L&D nurses who tell women to push and then count to 10, telling her to stop pushing and breathe, and it's one way of limiting closed glottis pushing to about five seconds, and that's an improvement over allowing women to just push uh, closed glottis for unlimited times. However, open glottis method must be encouraged because it's really in the best interest of the mother and baby. I can say that in many cases, it's not as fast at getting the baby out. There are a few emergency cases in which the baby simply needs to be gotten out as fast as he possibly can, and in that case you may see L&D staff allowing a certain amount of closed glottis pushing. We usually want actual emergence of the head from the perineum to be done slowly because it results in less tearing and perineal trauma to the mother. A multipara can sometimes move a baby from down from station two or even zero to station four in one big push and one more push and not only do we have a baby, we may have a second degree tear. Unless there's some problem, we really don't want it happening that fast. A large headed baby or a nuchal hand, which is a hand on the neck, and we may have a second degree tear anyway. With uncontrolled strong pushing, we can have what we call a blowout, which is a fourth degree tear that goes all the way through the vagina, it goes all the way through the perineum, through the anal sphincter, and up the rectal wall. If the cord is around the baby's neck, it is called a nuchal cord. If the hand or arm is extended alongside the neck during birth, it's called a nuchal hand, nuchal meaning neck. This increases the circumference or diameter of the neck as it goes through the perineum, and it's also uneven. We often have tears with those. A nuchal cord is often present, cords wrapped around the neck at least once. When the head is out, uh, the physician or midwife or the nurse, if, if the nurse happens to be the one that's doing the delivery because everybody else is away, um, they always feel for a cord around the neck. If it's present, it should be slipped over the head, and usually it's loose enough to do so. If it's not loose, then it's going to have to be clamped in two places, cutting in between. Just to remember that once the cord is cut, the baby has no oxygen source until he takes his first breath. That means he must be pushed out quickly and breathe, and that's taking a lot of pressure on yourself. <clears throat> I made sure I had a cooperative mom that had enough energy to push before I picked up those scissors. Sometimes there is no choice, and that is why we have resuscitation equipment at every single birth. Emergencies can develop with lightning and frightening speed. Note the instructions for suctioning with a bulb syringe. Mouth first, then nose. It shows up on most tests on the topic. A situation known as shoulder dystocia, in which the shoulders are too big to be borne easily, though the head has passed through the opening, is an emergency. We use the Gaskin maneuver to deal with it, and I have seen it work well. We essentially put the woman on her hands and knees. 
You may have to help her if she's had an epidural. This changes the angle of the pelvis and maybe even the diameters and the baby is able to come through. In the old days, we sometimes use fundal pressure. Fundal pressure is a situation in which the nurse pushes down on the woman's abdomen. We don't do that at all anymore. Notice the differing degrees of laceration. Note the episiotomy methods. In the U.S., we almost exclusively use the midline. In other countries, in Europe, for instance, they like to use the medial lateral. Emergency births will happen. Laymen, people on the street, so to speak, sometimes have to assist with them. You see a case in the paper a couple times a year in any given city of a girl delivering her own baby in a restroom somewhere. Go over the concept well. If a nurse is around, you will be expected to be the one to do the honors in a situation like this. The one thing I always make sure my students know is what to do about the cord in an emergency out of hospital delivery. There is no need, unless it is a nuchal cord that cannot be slipped over the head, there is no need to cut the cord at all. Many times when you hear of the teenage girl that delivers her own baby, she has nothing else to use, so she, she bites the cord in two. The mouth has an incredible number of bacteria, and they're all introduced to the cord in that way. It would be much better if you or anyone delivering a baby simply had the mother lay down, allow the baby to be born, wait for the placenta to to be born also, and when it comes out, just wrap it up with the baby and wait for the ambulance. Don't cut the cord. Once in the hospital with sterile scissors, the cord can be severed. The third stage is a little bit of an anticlimax. We've already had the baby in stage two of labor, and stage three is the placental stage. It doesn't hurt when it comes out. Uh, Health care providers love it when the placenta is born quickly and they don't have to wait long, but it can take up to one hour and still be considered normal. If it takes longer, procedures may have to be done to assist separation, but that's not a nursing procedure. Note the signs of placental separation. Once it is separated and not before, the physician or midwife may put a little, and I do mean a little traction on the cord to allow it to be assisted out. The cord must not be pulled if the placenta hasn't separated, since that could cause the uterus to invert and come out, be externalized, in which case the woman can go into shock.